Hi chemistry students, let's talk about real versus ideal gases and introduce the van der Waals equation. The problem kind of goes like this. As a, as a way to get started, it's good to think about what if we were to put 0.1 mole of two different gases into the same container, two liters in this case, and at the same temperature. The expectation is, if it's an ideal gas, that the pressure would be the same because N, V, and T are all identical. However, when we actually sit down and measure these values, we see that they're not the same. So how do we get two different measured values when they're the same conditions? So what we've just found out here is that when we look at real values, things that we measure, these, these experimental values, they're the more important thing. They're real, so we must trust them. However, we often calculate from an ideal case or a theoretical case what a value would be. And comparing those two often gives us an insight into what the properties are of the molecule that make them different. So what makes the, P, the real versus the ideal different? Well, maybe we can get more out of this if we take a look and calculate what the ideal gas law predicts. So that's what I've done here. I've predicted uh, with the ideal gas law that the pressure should be a whopping 2.05. We can immediately say that helium with the same pressure of 2.05 is acting like an ideal gas while the hydrogen fluoride at 2.03 atmospheres does not act like an ideal gas. All right, well, let's do this experiment with numerous gases. And if we look, it's not always the same. We saw before that the HF was too low. It was lower than the ideal. Well, here's CO2. It's a little bit too large. Argon, it's the same. H2O too small. Sulfur hexafluoride, it's a little bit too large. And so on. So the properties of the molecule must certainly determine this. It must not be the case that atoms and molecules are a certain way. It's just there's properties that make these things different. So let's check out and see what kind of properties might make up for this difference. And one of the first people to do this was a, a person named Van der Waals. And his equation is one that almost everyone starts with when trying to figure out what kind of effects real gases have versus ideal gases. And he said, attractive and repulsive forces, they really do exist in all real molecules. And so the kinetic molecular theory has made a mistake in ignoring them. So he looked at each one individually. So let's start with the repulsive forces. Because re with repulsive forces, here's what you've got. You've got molecules. They take up space. They are, they're, they're real things. And therefore, if you're a molecule in a container, you're, the volume you experience isn't really just that of the empty container. It's that of the empty container with other molecules in there. And a molecule can't go to a spot where a, a different molecule is already existing. Therefore, they kind of push each other away. And this is a repulsive force because two molecules can't occupy the same space. This is called the excluded volume because the way that Van der Waals dealt with it is he said, what we really need to consider is the real volume that a molecule experiences. And that would be the, the volume of the container less the volume of all those molecules that are in there. So the number of moles of molecules times the volume of an individual molecule, not the, not the volume of the container. And it's a really simple trick that you can do here with the ideal gas law to make it now more, uh, a more appropriate equation. All he did was he added this negative NB, this minus NB, subtracted that away. And what this is is the N is the number of moles and B is a measure of the actual volume of a mole of those gas particles. Uh, so I often say that this is the repulsive force term, and some people call it the excluded volume. We can see from looking at this that since we're subtracting from the denominator, the denominator will be smaller, and this will increase the pressure of the gas. And that should make sense because as the gas molecules are pushed away from each other due to the repulsive forces, they'll hit the walls of the container harder, which means there'll be a larger force when they hit the walls, and that means there's a larger pressure. We should also look at attractive forces because all matter is made of charged particles, and those can attract and repel. In this particular case, we're going to look at what happens when the opposite charges of, or opposite partial charges even, can attract each other. 
So what happens is these molecules near the walls of the container will then be pulled towards the center. Instead of being pushed towards the wall, they're going to be slowing down, hitting the wall with less force and therefore a lower pressure. We should expect that. So what van der Waals did was he took the adjustment he had made before, okay, we can see that right here, and he subtracted away another term. And this little a term is an attractive force term and it's related to the concentration. And you think, it, and so N over V moles per liter is concentration. That should make sense because if you think about it, the more concentrated the, the, the system is, the closer the molecules are to each other and the stronger the attractive forces are going to be. So what I'd like you to do now is click pause, read this problem and give it a try. This is a self-assessment and we'll look at it in class. Once you click play, a second self-assessment will come up. Read through that one, see if you can get it. And again, we'll talk about that in class as well.